Hello, friends. Happy Wednesday. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's not a roadway or animal. I'm, uh, it's early morning. I'm sitting in my basement. Uh, you probably heard the sump pump just go off because it's raining like crazy here today. And, I don't know. just felt like rambling a bit. Got a, uh, got to go to work today, but I came down here this morning to start squaring up the, well, continue squaring up the auction books, you know, sending out tracking numbers and all that stuff. It's, it's a lot of stuff to keep straight, but we're getting there. We're probably about halfway through with everything being shipped, so that's good. If you're waiting for something from me, it's going to go out on Saturday because I've just been crazy busy with work and uh, and getting all the tracking numbers straight so. uh so anyway i had some time before i have to head in i'm going to go in a little bit later today uh which will make the dogs happy because they've been a little crazy since the wife hasn't been home and i've been leaving them all day they're not used to being alone mm. got this little phil rivera pot i love this pipe Look at the metal work on that. And, uh, Haunted Bookshop. I tell you, Bill's been haunting me lately. Uh, so I, I look at pipes at night. This is, this is one of my guilty pleasures. I, I'll go to different websites and, and uh, or Instagram, you know, and just, just look at makers, pipe carvers and, and their pipes and think about what my next pipe is going to be. Because I've gotten to the point now where I'm just buying one, maybe two artisan pipes a year. And that's because I don't need pipes. Do any of us really, if we have a pipe, do any of us need pipe anyway? And uh, I'm pretty certain I want my next pipe to be a Phil Rivara because I've got, I try to get two or three from, from makers, from carvers, makers, from carvers I like. Um, and, you know, as far as YouTube goes, I, I, I really like uh, Jay Mouton and, and Phil Rivara. I've got three from Jay and I've only got two from Phil, so I got to balance that, you know. <laughs> so I'm pretty certain I want to get a Phil Rivara pipe and I want it to be a commission. Uh, but nevertheless, I, I look at what he's got available, and I, I can't buy a pipe right now. I just can't. I we've had so many uh, financial things come up in the in the past uh, couple of months with you know my family and my wife's family and, and and stuff, and it's just I can't do it. I could, but I, I won't. Comes a time in every man's life when he has to become an adult, and yeah. But I was looking at Phil's Etsy page last night, and God, he's got some nice pipes. <laughs> it's really tempting. He's got, he's got, yeah, I'm not an author guy, but he's got this, um, I don't remember, if it, I think it's Rusticated. Um, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful author uh, on his Etsy page. And then he's got this other one, um, he's calling a Bent Chestnut. Um, really gorgeous, uh, smooth. And uh, the pipe that I think I'm going to wind up commissioning from him is going to be a Calabash, because he does a really, really nice Calabash. And he's got one of those on, on um, Instagram right now as a second, so it's a, it's a, it's a bargain. And it's just like, ah, come on, Phil, you're killing me here. <laughs> I can't, can't do it. But If you're interested, I'll, I'll link to his Etsy page uh, below. It's it's Pipes and Sticks or Phil Pipes and Sticks. I'll, I'll find it and I'll put a link below. But uh, yeah, take a look. They're, they're beautiful pipes. And uh, if you're in the in the market for a pipe, it's good. Good uh, Phil's a good guy and a great pipe maker. Really enjoy them. What am I talking about? Why did I make this video? I just had time which is which is an unusual thing for me and i don't have a lot of time I've got like 
half an hour or so and I thought, ah, what the heck, I'm smoking a pipe, I'm sitting here, the camera's right there, let me turn it on. And, uh, so this is, this is a ramble, and it's Wednesday, so it's appropriate. Uh, I'm not driving, obviously. I, I gotta get that set up again, because I do enjoy those roadway rambles. I don't know a lot of you folks do. I went to the uh, drugstore last night, the pharmacy, the chemist, for those of you that are over across the pond, or whatever the heck you call it in your neck of the woods, the place you go to buy drugs and such. Uh, I needed to buy mineral oil and uh, paraffin oil, for those of you that are not in the U.S., I use it for a lot of things, uh, and I'm 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 running out of it, and I need needed to buy some more. And I think the last time I bought mineral oil, I bought you know it's like a I don't know, a sixteen ounce bottle, maybe eight ounce bottle. It's a, it's a, it's a it's enough to last a long time. And it was oh probably like a dollar fifty or something like that. Seven dollars. Seven dollars for mineral oil. I I couldn't believe it. And I I need it because I use it on my my oil stones for sharpening tools. That's why I had to get it um, now rather than wait and shop around and stuff. And I know some guys use baby oil, which is basically mineral oil with some fragrance added. And I, I don't like that. I don't like my workshop smelling like babies. <laughs> so I, I, but I thought, well, you know, if it's if it's a dollar, I'll buy it. Or you know, and it's the same price. It wasn't wasn't any cheaper. In fact, it might have been a little bit more expensive. I didn't look that closely. It's funny. A couple a couple weeks ago, I was researching, been doing some research on oil stones and what people use for. Uh, lubricant on oil stones because that's what I like to use and I've, I've always used either mineral oil or three-in-one oil on them and you know it's, it's been fine but I was just curious um, what other folks might be doing and, I, and, and as I was looking into this I thought to myself I don't actually know what mineral oil is I use it for all these things like I'll use it I use it when I'm making stems to just kind of soak into the ebonite and uh, I think it polishes up better when I do that uh, when I'm restoring stems I do the same thing I'll use it as a lubrication when I'm sanding stems and then of course I, I use it to uh, for, for the oil stones and probably other things too like if I just need a little bit of lubrication on something or I need to lubricate some sanding it's not a some people use it as a finishing oil on cutting boards and stuff. It's not good for that because it never, it never dries. Um, but it's 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 good for a lot of things, and you know it's it's relatively non-toxic. You put it on babies. People use it as a laxative. You know, so it's it's a food grade product. I have no idea what it is. So I looked it up recently, and it's you know it's a byproduct of Petroleum distillation, basically something that comes out of the uh, process where we go from oil to gas. Oil to petrol, for those of you across the pond. Doing a lot of translation today, guys. And uh, it struck me as kind of funny that we're, you know, baby oil is, is mineral oil, and I don't even know why we have baby. I don't have, never had a baby. I don't have children. But, uh, you know, we liberally apply baby oil to babies, if I recall from my younger days. And it's kind of weird that we're slopping down our babies with a petroleum byproduct. I, I don't know. It just struck me as odd. And I don't know why we do it. I guess it moisturizes. I have no idea why, what baby oil is for, <laughs> the more I think about it. But at least it's not made from babies, so that's good. I had these horrible... Squeezing, you know, because olive oil is made from squeezing olives. I mean, that That's not the case. Oh, boy. I better change the subject. <laughs> I 
I just wanted to bookshop is nice this morning. And I've got some eight o'clock coffee. This is my WDUQ mug. You can barely see the WDUQ. WDUQ was my favorite radio station when I lived in Pittsburgh. It was uh, their jazz station and great jazz community in Pittsburgh. Fantastic station. It's gone now, unfortunately. It uh, was bought out and turned into something else. Uh, but but it, was, it was a wonderful, wonderful jazz station. They had some great uh, hosts on, on that channel and I, I really enjoyed it. And I used to listen to it in the evenings because during the day it was actually uh, the NPR news station. I don't like NPR news. I didn't like it back then. You know, this is back in the 90s. I, I didn't like it. Uh, it's just very... It was, it, it was nice because there was a lot of long-form news content, which is, is great, but it was, even back then, it was just so clearly biased and not sensationalist in the way that things are now sensationalist, like, you know, not, not just going for the ratings kind of stuff, but boy, they, they pick on a particular story and just beat it to death like, day after day after day. I don't know if they still do that. I haven't listened to it in many, many years. But the reason I bring it up is that's faded and sadly disappearing. And on the other side of the mug, we've got this brilliant NPR News logo. So that annoys me. That's what I see when I drink. But I bought it to support the, uh, the jazz side of the station. It was during one of their funding drives. I used to like public radio funding drives because you, you'd, you'd get you get to know the hosts a bit better. There's the sun pump again. You're getting a lot of rain. And I don't think they do them anymore. I, I listen to the, the classical station that I listen to here is a similar thing. It's NPR News. Well, they, that's not true. They don't have all day NPR News. They have... Um, they play classical music with hourly NPR news. And then in the evening, they become a jazz station. So I listen to that station quite a bit. And their fun drives now, they, they sort of start advertising them as, uh, you know, if we reach our goal, we won't have a fun drive. So they, they never have that, that several days or week of just the host talking and trying to raise money and stuff. And I, I miss that. No, it was every day. It would get annoying, but once or twice a year, it was kind of neat to get to know those people a little bit better. Well, that was quite a ramble. So, to recap, NPR News, not good. Mineral oil, not made from babies. <laughs> and check out Phil Rivara's pipes. I'll put a link below to his Etsy page. And uh, or and check him out on Instagram as well. And if you want to buy a pipe from him, go get in touch with him through Instagram because then Etsy doesn't have to take their pound of flesh. So anyway, guys, that's, that's about it. Uh, hope you all have a fantastic Wednesday. I'll be back on Friday night with the live stream. Uh, we're planning our Christmas live stream right now. I don't know. I'm waiting to get feedback from my Santa. Uh, but we're going to have an interview with Santa Claus as we do every year. Uh, that's going to be either the 16th or the 23rd of December. But this coming Friday, we're just going to have regular old uh, live stream. And I'm going to try to do something, some sort of giveaway type thing, uh, some kind of uh, trivia doesn't work very well, but we'll figure something out for a, for a giveaway for the, the week that we don't have the, uh, the the interview with Santa Claus. And if you haven't seen the interview Santa Claus, it's great. It, it's amazing that Santa takes the time out every year to uh, spend an hour with, 
with us here in the YouTube pipe community. So something to look forward to, guys. Well, get on with your Wednesdays. Get to work. I'm going to get to work. And uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Take care, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.